Sendings versus the world on the Mitsubishi Electric Heating Hotline this is my buddy LeVar Arrington. Var, you're a tough man to run down, sir. Oh, man. Well, today, you know, it's my, my daughter's birthday, so I've been running around with her, actually. So I apologize for that. Oh, no problem. No problem at all. Just glad we were yeah. able to get a hold of you. All right. You got to yeah. gotta clear this all out for me. I've been, ever since I said you're coming on, everybody's tweeting me and saying, am I going to ask you? You got to talk about those tweets where you're talking about the Redskins and your career and then Steinberg ran with it. Give us a little clarification as to what your mindset was. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, it's no, it's like no military secret. I, I mean, when I look at how things are handled and things that I see, uh, it just, you, you just have a moment. You have those moments where, you know, people act like you're not allowed to reflect and, and say things. You know, say things that you feel or say things that you're thinking about when, when you read, see some of the things that are going on. That was, you know, I just was thinking out loud. Like, wow. Like, that that was that was a response to this season, is, is what was being said by the the president and GM of the team. And it just, you know, if people, you know, if people, you know, came at, at me pretty tough on Twitter. But the one thing about me is, for one, you're not going to you're not going to come on social media and bully me into saying what it is that you want me to say. That's first and foremost. Secondly, I could care less about misinformed opinions about me. That's that's secondly. And then thirdly, you know, it's the truth. <laughs> when when I say my career was stolen, see what people what people tend to start to think, they they try to personalize it and and internalize it as to how <laughs> how it how it happened. Or, or what I meant by it, and, and so they start talking about, you know, it was it my injuries, was it my agent, different things like that. You take away my injuries, you take away my agents. I still had three of the best years of football that any defender has has had in the game during that three year run. So w when you talk about what I did personally in terms of my own personal accomplishments, it's never been about personal. Well, I always felt like if, if guys handle their business, if everybody that, that is a part of the team handles their business that, that as a personal, as a personal uh, approach to, to having success, that you're going, to, you're going to have success. And so for me, I approach my job that way no matter what. Every single time I came to work, I came to work. I didn't come to, to shuck and jive and, and not do what I was supposed to do. I always came to work. I always showed up for practice, and I always showed up to play in the games, and I always showed up in the community. Even when it wasn't a part of my job to do so, it was always my commitment to be in the community. And that's why I know people who understand what I was saying when I said that didn't take offense to it. I, when I was speaking of stole my career, I, of course I'd love to have a Hall of Fame career. I would have loved to have had a Hall of Fame career. But but with that, you have to have a, a organization that's conducive to having that. Otherwise, it's just a shot in the night if you're going to have an opportunity to have success. And at the end of the day, it's really no fun being good and not being on a good team. We never won. Never, we never won. So when when people get get offended by what I said, say I'm not a real Redskin or this and that, yeah, I am a real Redskin. And I'm a real Redskin's great, whether you like it or not. You can take it. You can leave it. I could care less about what you, you think about it. I know what I've accomplished, and I know what I did while I wore that uniform. But the bottom line is we did not accomplish very much as a team. And so when I look at my career, it stole my career. And, and that's as simple as, as it gets. When you see the lack of regard or the lack of attention to detail and how things are handled, and, and this is, this is the, these are the answers that you receive from Bruce Allen, after a season like this, is that you want off the field? Like to me, that that's it. To me, that's the reason why things don't change. It's the reason why things don't change. It's the same. It's the same vicious process and the same vicious cycle every single year. They have a, a bad season. Some bad things happen. People get upset. Then they make a splash some way somehow. Whether it's a free agency, whether it's through a hire of a coach. Now this year it's a GM. It's it's the same thing. And then. Fans get excited. There's the hope is refilled. You get you get an opportunity to say, okay, I'm going to buy my tickets or re renew my tickets. This this might be it. It's the same vicious cycle. And and like I said, Chad, you know, you and I both know we we've been in the 
the, the, the media business for quite some time, talk yeah. radio, and, and, and people are always going to have crazy things to say. What you got to understand, people, is that I don't, I, I don't back down from you. You are not going to insult me into saying what you want me to say. You're not going to insult me into a corner where I'm going to, to switch up and say, oh, you're right, I'm so sorry. The truth is my truth. My, my truth is my truth. So if I'm on my Twitter feed and I choose to put on my Twitter feed what I'm thinking and what it is that how it applies to me, that's what I'm going to do. And that's never going to change. So you can choose to follow it or you can choose to not follow it. But I didn't. And here's the one thing that you also got to take into consideration. I was just given a thought based off of something I read on my, my timeline. I didn't go looking for attention. I just, put a, I just put an opinion out there based off of what I had read. Like, in what world am I not allowed to do that? Like, I, so to be accused for looking for attention and stuff like that, please, please, good night. Good night with that. I, I, I gave an opinion. The opinion was the opinion, and people lose their minds about it. They hmm. freak out about it. It, it just seems, seems so silly to me. So, but basically, just in summation, the essence of what you're trying to say is, look, I've got some perspective here. I'm seeing a lot of the same stuff in my situation still going on with the franchise. It seems like that was what you were only thing you were trying to say. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, do I need to say that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, you never even played for the Redskins. Does it look any different to you? Uh, it, it looks very similar to a lot of the same things we've seen over the course of probably 15, 16 years. Okay. So if, if it looks the same to you from the outside, and I'm telling you the same thing from, from somebody who was on the inside, what what does it matter who it came from? And then and, and to, to 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 throw it out there that I'm piling on. What am I piling on to? I just made an observation. It's an observation. It's not me piling on to anything. I get paid to give an opinion, and and I absolutely and within my my parameters to give an opinion. And that was on my private my well on my Twitter, which it isn't private, but I put it on my Twitter, and. And it's, it's merely, I was just putting it, you know, it's just kind of, everybody always talks about I'm disgruntled and I, I'm upset and I'm bitter. It's like, it's so tired. It's such a tired way of trying to justify what you already know. So the whole point of it is, is that you think so much of a sport and of a team that you would actually say some of the most ridiculous things that have no education behind it. No educational value, no facts, no real facts behind what it is that you're throwing out there because you're you're looking at how bad of a situation it is, and it's maybe because it, it has something to do with what were good times in your childhood or good times as an adult with you and your kids or good times with your, your wife or with your husband. Or you had a you had a moment in life that really, really was magical that's associated with this team. And, and for one reason or another, you're going to protect those memories, but nobody's attacking your memories. The only person's memories that are getting attacked here are mine. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole point is you're not going to change what my experiences or my observations are. So you can either take it or you can leave it, but my observations are going to be based off of what I see, not what, not what you try to, to dictate to me. And and that's that's the that's the short of it. That's I'm not on here to to, to backpedal or take back what I said. My career was stolen, and anybody else who came through those doors and had hopes of, of winning and winning a lot and competing and competing for championships, they didn't have that. And and some of it has to do with players. Some of it has to do with coaches. Some of it has to do with with the organization. I'll take my fair share of the blame as a player. But at some point, when you keep changing the players' names out and you change the coaches' names out and you continue to change all these, all this swapping taking place, but you're getting the same results, then at some point you take a look at it and, and me looking at it, we, we just probably didn't have a real opportunity to have a, a, a real level of success in, in that atmosphere, in that environment. And that continues to be what it is. So if you want to be upset about it, be upset about it. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned with that. I'm, I'm really not. It's a game. 
it's it, it's a job. You know, people sitting there talking about, well, you got paid a lot of money. Why are you? Look, that was my job, and I had a good time, and I did what I needed to do, and I competed. But but the bottom line, Chad, is we were never a real competitive team. Even when we made the playoffs, we weren't that competitive of a team. So the team has not been competitive in who knows how long. And I was just making a point. And and if I'm looking at my career from high school and college, I never won a national title. But we were I think I only lost like I was only a part of three losses per like a year. A year. Like two two losses here maybe a, a three loss season there it, it, it wasn't and we never really lost in high school and I was a part of I was a part of winning programs I know what a winning program looks like so if I was making a, a reference based off of what my career was then I'm allowed to you know why Chad do you want to know why I'm allowed to make a reference as it applies to me in my life or why, why be my career because it's mine hmm. it's mine it belongs to me I own it I'm not disgruntled. I'm not upset. I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, do I have to live with that? Sure. I was with Terrell Davis today. I was with Warren Sapp today. I was with Michael Irving today, uh, Kurt Warner. I was with all those guys today in a meeting. And, and you know what? They're all going to be, some are already Hall of Famers, and some will be Hall of Famers. And I look at those guys, and, and the only thing that separates me from them is, is very little things. There's very simple things that separate me from them. And those are my friends and those are my peers. And we have those conversations all the time. And I'm allowed to share that because there are educated fans out there. There are educated people that can look at things at face value and see what it is and understand it for what it is. I'm not a shock jock. I don't need to be a shock jock. My resume speaks for itself. People sitting there talking about I wasn't that good anyway and I don't need to, I don't even need to have an opinion. Boy, shut, shut your mouth. At one point in time, I led every linebacker in the league in sacks. That's not an easy feat. It's not an easy feat to do. It's not an easy feat to be a first ballot, a first ballot uh, pro bowler in consecutive years. It's not. It's not an easy feat to do to be a, a consecutive all-pro ballot in, in consecutive years. It's not an easy thing to do. And I did that with different coaches every year, and that makes it even more complicated. So I do have the right to talk as, as somebody who's accomplished at a high level in the league. I certainly can't. And and you can't you, you just you can't take that away. And and again, I'm not I'm not one to shy away from, from people's harsh criticisms or throwing insults at me because at the end of the day, you don't give me my happiness and you're not gonna take it from me. So I'm just gonna give my opinions and, and that's that's what I do. I'm gonna give my opinion. Oh, and it is what it is. Thank you. <laughs> well, I got you. What's your opinion on McCullen and this hiring and his press conference and then and the whole, the, just the, I guess, the notion that it seems like there's been some growth on the part of Snyder to even go in this direction? The, the, here's the reality of it. If the guy that they just hired is willing to go into the environment and, and keep himself keep himself grounded in what it is that he came there to do and is actually able to do that void of any type of real influence, you know, from anywhere else that's already there, then he may have a chance. Anyone who does it, whether it's the GM or whether it's the coach, whoever it is that they deem to have that type of uh, responsibility, they cannot, they cannot become a part of the established environment. They can't become a part of the established culture if they're going to change it. If they do, they will fall and they, they will they will become victims the same way that every single person that came before them did. It'll be no different. And then we'll have the same conversation about how it didn't work with him or why why it didn't work. And I guess those same people that talk crazy about me will say something crazy about him as to why he needs to go. The same people that talk crazy about Robert Griffin III now those same people that always have something crazy to say, if you're not saying what they want you to say, they'll have something to say about that. But the bottom line is he has to have autonomy to be able to do what he needs to do, void of the influence that has been the influence there uh, for all these years. That's that's the only way and only time we'll be able to tell if he's able to do so. 
Well, it's going to have to be something where we're going to have to give him. Hopefully, I'm just the only thing I'm worried about, Varn, we're up on it, is the patience. Like, I just hope it's there from the fans, and I hope it's there from Snyder. Well, uh, again, it's, it's you got to wait and see. If, if you think that it's anything other than wait and see at this point, then you know what? God bless you, because I don't know what rock you live under or what world you live in, but if you're looking at this team and you're trying to figure out how you should view it and what direction it's going in, you can't, you can't possibly know. You can't possibly know. So it's just going to have to be a wait and see approach if you're, if you're using conventional wisdom. That Lavar Arrington, and of course NFL Network. Catch him on the NFL AM television program. Thank you for clearing it up, bud, and have a great weekend. Always well, appreciate it's it. It's already been clear, Chad, but <laughs> I'm glad I got an opportunity to further clear it. Thank you. You brother. have a great weekend too, man. Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. Happy New Year, Lavar. There he goes, Lavar right, Arrington. Later. Give him a follow on Twitter at Lavar Arrington. He will mix it up with you. He's not scared to do that. I'm only seven minutes late for the update. Let's get it from Chuck. Roll out the trash cans.